الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله ذي الملك والملكوت ذي العزة والجبروت الحمد لله حي قيوم لا ينام عزيز لا يضام قهار لا يرام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون نسأل الله الكريم أرحم الراحمين أن لا يميتنا إلا على ملة الإسلام الله سبحانه وتعالى saying in this ayah of Surah Ali Imran or you who believe fear Allah as you should be feared and they not accept on a state of Islam for may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful bestow upon us the greatest of the gift which is to die on a state of Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hijr addressing to one of the most evil if it's not the source of the evil or the source of the evil or like incarnate, incarnating the evil Iblis Allah qala inna هذا صراط علي مستقيم إن عبادي ليس لك عليهم سلطان إلا من اتبعك من الغوي. الله سبحانه وتعالى said the path that leads to him. And when Iblis threatened that he's going to mislead all the children of Adam to cast them into the hellfire by make fair seeming to them the worldly life and their deeds in a way they will fall into the disobedience of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Allah سبحانه وتعالى said for my servant, you do not have any authority upon them. And this is that Allah makes straight. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it to be a, a divine law. Qala, ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. Except those who follow you from the deviators. Now, in this ayah, as you can see, and if you try to analyze the story of uh, Iblis, la'anahullah, with Adam, you find like the Iblis is the father of materialism. It's not like, you know, something new that it can emanate from the, uh, you know, from the uh, Greek philosophy or from the Western philosophy. So he judged Adam, alayhi salam, based on materialistic thing. Like he said, oh, you know, you created him from, uh, you know, from teen, and you created me from fire, created him from clay. So it's like, I am better for him. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the scale of the preferences b between his creation is the servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So though this is already was the defect into the soul of Iblis, la'anahullah, that there is no way that he can see the truth or he can see what it means to be uh, the path, the true path and the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the ayah, inna ibadi laysa laka alayhum sultan. My servant, you do not have, you do not have any authority upon them. And this is glad tidings for us. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Except those who follow you from al -ghawin. And in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only said al -ghawin those who commit evil things, those who are really entitled by nature, by their own nature, the nature that they chose for themselves to be followers of the shaitan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't make them gawin. He didn't make them corrupted or deviated. It is them who by their action becomes like candidate to be subhanallah under the way of the shaitan. So if they open up the gate for the shaitan, the shaitan come to welcome that invitation and he will keep deviating them till subhanallah it will revoke to the point that they revoke their oath with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, looking at this as a believer living into the society and the world of today, you want to be always from those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them from al-mukhlasin. Al-mukhlasin, those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will guide you to be always devoted and driven toward the action of the good to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on and you do want to have that the authority of the shaitan or you you give the authority to shaitan to iblis to lead you astray 
So here, an action of mujahada, which is required from the believer, continuous action of striving required from the believer to keep himself or herself on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be under the protection, under the cover of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, what will be the true action? The comprehensive action will help us in our life, in our journey, to have, subhanAllah, this striving so we can keep ourselves close to Allah and under the Allah's protection away from the authority or away from the power of the shaitan. And as we said, it's us who open the gate for the shaitan to use our abilities in corrupting our way. The action is, a comprehensive action is Al-I'tisamu Billah. I'd like to, you know, pour it, refine it, understand it, and see what the thing that we live today, and some of the action of our own people, that we do not question their sincerity, but it's as a way of advice and a reminder for ourselves. Because when you look at yourself, and you want to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in state that he's pleased with you. Are you going to come with your heart and with your deeds or are you going to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your picture and a paper that you're saying that I am a Muslim? Of course, if you come with paper as a Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept you because he said in the beginning, Inna ibadi, all my servants, you do not have any authority on them except those who follow you from the deviator. So anyone is entitled and had the choice to be protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu said in hadith, everyone is going to paradise except who refuses and who are the, the refuses, who choose to be among the deviator and ob uh, obey the shaitan or refuse the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So al-i'tisamu billah, ikhwani, is to hold fast to Allah. And holding fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which represent kind of holding the whole structure of your deen. When you do the salat, the zakat, everything that is holding it all together is this holding fast to Allah. So in every aspect of your life, where you turn, you turn and you hold fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a beautiful image. Everything that you have in your mind. When you, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe it by fleeing to Allah. Imagine fleeing. So everybody subhanallah is running towards something to find help, to find refuge. Your only refuge is Allah. Whatever you think you are, where you're running, running to Allah. Where I'm going, I'm going to pray. When you wake up in the morning, you go to your work, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you. So always you are running in any problem, in any aspect of your life, you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how subhanallah, this aspect of fleeing to Allah, constant fleeing to Allah, represents the structure of your relation with Allah, which is your deen. And this is how it becomes Islam, as we have said it many times, the way of your life. Now, there is, so... If we think of this comprehensive action, which is the holding fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our focus in the striving will be how can we stop any element that is going to weaken our holding fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very simple. For this element, there's elements that are obvious, very clear, and there's elements that are hidden. And that's where the problem is. For the evidence, you know, for the very obvious things, manifesting, which is like someone, for example, does not pray. You cannot say, I'm holding fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't pray. So it does not work. So it's very clear. People are delaying their prayer, prayer after prayer. They do it by the end of the day, and then they might do it on you know, Friday. Maybe they're so busy, they're going to do it in Ramadan. You are far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is it's very obvious that you cannot be holding fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are turning, it's like completely from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, away from Allah, or turning into a for me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for anyone in this situation, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put light in his heart and her heart and guide them back to him. However, there is an element who are hidden, hidden element not seen in it. This element, people, they, they don't know about it. And it is what its effect, it's really, subhanAllah, eating inside the base of our faith and, subhanAllah, weakening our identity in a way, subhanAllah, changing the perception. This perception, when subhanAllah, the shaitan get to into your perception, he changed the way how you view things, how to appreciate things, how to be, you know, attached to things. Things the shaitan make you think to seem, seem like very attractive. You run away to it and you think that you are very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these elements are the most devastating, threatening, 
and dangerous element. If first say, what is the i'tisab? What is holding fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Holding fast, as I said, that you run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every fast, uh, in every aspect of your life. Which is mean, you surrender to Allah, you believe in Allah, you rely in Allah, you trust in Allah, you turn in every aspect. When you have anything, you turn to Allah. When you are disputing and arguing, and if you have any issue, you turn back to Allah. And if there is a judgment or there is any issue that you're going to have arbitrator, you do it within the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu told us all this aspect in one dua when he makes Qiyamul Layl as in Sahih al-Bukhari. He used to say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma laka aslamtu wa bika amantu wa alayka tawakkaltu wa ilayka anabtu wa bika khasamtu wa ilayka hakamtu. فَاغْفِرْ لِي مَا قَدَّمْتُ وَمَا أَخَّرْتُ وَمَا أَسْرَرْتُ وَمَا أَعْلَنْتُ So in the end of this, you said to Allah, Ya Allah, I surrender. I believe in you, Ya Allah. I surrender to you, Ya Allah. I trust on you, Ya Allah. I turn to you, Ya Allah. In every aspect of, you know, in my life, it's with you that I defend myself. It's with you that I go and argue and dispute. And to you, Ya Allah, you are my last judge. Then, the, Ya Allah, after all that, then, Ya Allah, forgive me all my future and past sins and all, all my, the sins that I may a'lan to may asar, whatever I have said openly and what I have, you know, secretly. So you see, the action of the forgiveness comes after whole structure of action of the heart, which is make you to be entitled of holding fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, after all that, there is two other structure who holding all of that, which is the prayer, which is in the prayer, is your own servitude to Allah, is in your own identity, and also the prayer, it's like the factory of your behavior. Factory, as I said, the factory, it really embellish, improve, uh, you know, change your behavior to be a good behavior, to be a light, a beacon of light around people and the zakat. All of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it in the end of Surah Al-Hajj. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qal, and this is actually what elevates you to be in the status of a shahid, a shaheed which is going to be witness in the day of judgment. Can you imagine if you do all this, you're going to be a witness. What it means, witness? That you've already been saved, been honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are in this rahmah and more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you an honor to be a witness on others. It's like you're serving a jury into the court. That's subhanAllah example like that. So how can we do that? Qala the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going to be a witness over you and you're going to be a witness over people. Therefore, establish a prayer and observe and pay your zakat. And he said, and fall, hold fast to Allah. He is the best and the supreme ilah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the greatest mawla, greatest protector subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you see, the i'tisam comes after this series of action. So when you know that, when you know that, you know that there is only mawla, there is only mawla, protector, friend, that he can give you everything, that he can help you, guide you, protect you, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the i'tisam. Therefore here, if you ask yourself a question, what is the relation between this i'tisam, holding fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and my faith, my iman, my iman, which is really my drive, my engine of the action, because without iman, it's either you have settled into your heart the love of desire, which is going to really drive you and motivate you toward getting your desire, or you have, your heart is filled with the iman, it's going to drive you and be a strong, you know, willpower for doing the good. So what is the relation between this holding fast, as we said, is a comprehensive action that really hold and maintain and preserve your structure of your deen and the iman. The parable that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us and that we inspire from is like the tree who will give its fruit. So the fruits are like the iman and this tree that is being provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, its energy and its strength and its power is this holding fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which, which means that the stronger is your holding fast to Allah, the stronger is your faith. 
The stronger is your faith, the closer you are to Allah, the more driven toward the good, the more light you have, the more guide to other people, the more blessed you will be. If this holding fast to Allah, what is the trust, iman, surrendering, turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, weak in salah, very weak salah, no khushu at all, this element subhanallah reduce the i'tisam, holding fast to Allah. What is going to happen? Your iman will reduce. And by this reducing the iman, what happened then? Then you open up the gate for the shaitan. By opening up the gate for the shaitan, you became candidate to be deviated. Why? Because when the iman reduces, what happened? The nafs, your own nafs, your own self, who has like, you know, the gimmies, the wants, the love of the dunya, the entertainment, loving to do this, loving to do this, that is going to come to the surface because the iman does not have any power anymore. They want you to follow me with this drawing of concept. So when it goes up, that's what is the invitation to Satan, to the Shaitan. So the Shaitan will come and he will keep deviating you, deviating you, deviating you to the point that the whole i'tisam, you're holding fast is in Allah, is lost. And then someone will be, subhanAllah, in at Allah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala, وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ نُقَيِّضْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِيبٌ Whoever who turn away, as I have described it from the remembrance of Allah, will appoint for him a shaitan. He will be like an intimate friend to him or to her. And then, قَالَ وَإِنَّهُمْ لَيَضُلُّونَهُمْ عَنَ السَّبِيلِ Indeed, they are leading, leading them astray from the path, and they think that they are guided. That's the problem. That's why we said the most devastating and dangerous element in this you know, weakening the i'tisam billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala is the thing that you still you feel good because you're still praying, you're still our sister wearing the hijab, the still the brother, he's, mashallah, he's uh, taking care of his beard, the still you come to the masjid, you still, you know, in Ramadan making, subhanallah, a great, you know, celebration in Ramadan, but the heart is empty. Why? Because that holding fast to Allah is gone. Now, if you try to describe a picture, please follow me. So, the base of the Iman, what nourishes your Iman is this holding fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it weakens, so there is a layer that comes under, subhanAllah, between this holding fast and your Iman which needs to be nourished. So, this layer, it becomes a base stronger and stronger, that you think that is giving you the nourishment, the strength for your iman. While you forget about the holding fast to Allah. I'll give you a very manifest example. It is, for example, that Allah gives you a lot of gifts. Alhamdulillah, you have favors, you have successful in your job, you're successful into your business, successful into your career. This has become the base of the nourishment of your iman. Because you feel like you are really blessed. And by returning back to this base, what you have forgotten, you've forgotten the true base. So any big trial that is going to come to, to you, you're going to be lost. Why? Because you already lost the base who really nourish and strengthen and keep strong your iman. Now, that's I come to an example that is hidden an example. And this is from the, from the, from the way of the advice. And as I said, we do not question the sincerity of many of our people who work in the field, especially the political fields or the activism way. But this is a nasiha for all of us, starting with myself and all, all my brothers and sisters, to reflect on this and to apply the example that I have gave you, because it's very important. Because if we weaken that holding fast to Allah, we are weakening our iman, we are turning or evoking our identity. And I'm going to give you examples. So, as we said, uh, you know, the voting, it's a civil right. It's permissible for you. You are responsible of that. However, there is no evidence and it is wrong to make it an Islamic cause. So, this is what we make the difference. The difference is not to not vote. If you want to vote, that's your right. It's permissible. 
Cannot someone say, do not go work, do not do fitness, do not... This is an action. You are a member, active member of the society. If you want to vote, this is your own right. However, it's not an obligation to vote. So someone who chooses to not vote, that's his own right too. Because he said, I wish there is a third option. I will have voted for the third option. Okay? So this is here. The issue is when we make it part of the deen. And this is is going to threat all our structure of the deal. Now, imagine this, the, the drawing that I gave you. You have the holding fast in Allah. When you hear, for example, our, some of our people, as I said, we, Wallahi, we do not question their sincerity, but it's out of heedlessness, out of lack of knowledge, and I might share with you the main reason why it's happening. If you hear, for example, if you do read slogans like this, uh, our voices have uh, been heard, and, uh, yeah, and then our issues being kind of solved, and it's in the end they said, now our community is protected. It really hurts. Because Allah protects you, not your vote. It's Allah, ya He protects you. The community is protected to have insurance. Who is the healer? It's Allah. The community is protected to have more grants. Who is the provider? It's Allah. We are weakening the holding fast to Allah without knowing. And when you hear someone with a big slogan say, our vote is our power. Yeah, our power is, your power is your aqeedah, is your creed. Your power is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not in your vote. How can we say such a thing? And then you bring me reference from the Quran. Kabura maqtan inda Allah. This is the greatest subhanallah forging. Things that does not belong to the deen. As we said, you know, just reflect on this point. This is, they, we made it out to be part of the deen. That's not right. And this is what's happening. This is exactly what's happening. So by thinking that this is going to provide for us might, that is going to provide for us honor, that is going to protect for, provide for us protection, there's, I don't need Allah anymore. We don't say it, but our heart submit to it. Without knowing, as I told you, because the shaitan then is going to enter there. We open the gate for the shaitan. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is for measurement, for analogy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قَالْ وَإِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً قَالْ وَجَدْنَا عَلَيْهَا أَبَاءَنَا وَاللَّهُ أَمَرَنَا بِهَا When they do an evil thing, when they do an awkward thing, what they said, they said, we find our father doing the same, and Allah ordered us with us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Allah does not order or command any evil action. However, stand to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every masjid, and call him with sincerity. And he said, a group that Allah led astray because of their choice, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala group guided. For those who led astray, they took the alliance or they make an alliance with the shaitan and they think they are guided that's subhanallah the equation alliance with the shaitan and think they are guided and that being thinking that guiding that is the blindness that is what is going to subhanallah be uh, changing devastating wallahi al-azim our identity an example this is from the quran but an example from the history the church, they started clean. However, for the sake of bringing people together, for the sake of making peace, they have a marriage with the Roman idol, uh, idol worshippers. So by inviting and having the idolatry to penetrate into the heart of the dean of Christianity, which is you have the Catholic Church, church the whole dean changed. So what it happened is being subhanAllah taken away from it that characteristic of being from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that characteristic of thabat, firmness, which is mean there is no reference anymore of a truth to base your judgment on it. That's it, it's gone. Why? Because you changed it. And this is afterward, people running away from it, all what you see from secularism, its birth is from that action of changing the deed. And it was with sincere intention, just to have the Roman accept. So that's a compromise. Let you know, I'll accept your statue and everything, and you accept. What happened? It turned, the religion it turned to be a form. 
just right with no soul. And if we continue like this, the Muslim is going to be a picture, a sister with hijab. You can see them in all the ads now, and a man with a beard, and people in Hajj, and that is going to be like a form. There is no Islam. This is just Muslims. And this is, Ikhwani, it's a reality. If you do not stand for it, then we're going to lose our deen. As we said, we do not question our people, but it's to advise and to just reflect on such a thing. What are the main two conditions? In brief, the two conditions, the first one, is that we do not stand firm in defending our morals. If you see something wrong, you say, Yahi, this is wrong. I cannot do like the Christian church, you know, the Catholic one they did. Okay, we accept their idolatry in, 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 in the way to, to be like, you know, nice and bring everybody together. That does not work like that. The Prophet ﷺ was being given the kingship. The Prophet ﷺ was given money, everything. He didn't do it. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, be patient, be patient, be patient for the light to come fully from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any contamination. And what happened two weeks ago or three weeks ago, it's not the higher he or she into the, the Catholic Church, they announce, they embrace and they accept the, the equality of gender or the marriage of the same gender. Why? Because there is no any more truth that is stable, you come back to it. But may Allah protect our deen. May Allah protect our identity. And may Allah make us to listen to the advice, to implement it, to do it, you know, in a way to embrace and to support our deen. And I say, if anyone has an evidence or proof, Allah, he will bring it and we, and we discuss it. But this is, is as clear as you seeing the sun in the middle of the day. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى. One of the main characteristic into the faith and the religion is what we call الثبات. الثبات is the firmness. So the structural thing that does not change. The whole world is ثابت. You find the constellation, all the stars turning, but the thing, the frame is ثابت. Everything is goes accurate and precise. That's the same for the life of a human being. If you change the truth, every time you make like subhanAllah, alter the truth, then everything will be lost. So this thabat, this is what you see it in the Quran, in every place. He said the Prophet Sallallahu Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, Fasper, be patient and do not listen to any disbeliever and grateful or a sinner, even a sinner, do not listen to them. Fasber, Ya Rasulullah, be patient, you are under our protection. Fasber, and do not be like the person, he's a prophet. A prophet, he deserted his people. Why? Because they didn't want to listen to him. He told them, Asbar, be patient, Ya Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. By, subhanAllah, be patient to all the harm that your people are causing you. And don't be like Yunus when he left. Can you imagine? So all of that is our deen. All of that what is teach us our deen. And I finish with the story of Imam Ahmed. Someone, subhanAllah, he's a tailor. And he's a tailor for a sultan, a sultan. This sultan is known by his transgression and injustice. He was having, subhanAllah, some doubt after reading a in Surah Hud, قَالَ وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا Do not incline to the transgressor one. So he came to Imam Ahmed, he said, Yeah, Imam, I work tailor, you know, I tailor clothes for this sultan. Am I from those who incline to those transgressors? You know what Al Imam Ahmed said? And please take this as a way of measuring your action. Al Imam Ahmed he said, No, you are one of them. You are one of the transgressors. The one who's selling you the thread, he's the one who inclined to the transgressor. That's the originality, the purity of our deen. You cannot give one thread from your deen to get a piece of peace does not happen. That's, there is no compromising in the deen. You cannot accept something that Allah said haram into the Quran for the thing, for the benefit of the Muslim. The Muslim, they don't need you. They have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
With all what you do, you cannot help any one of us in the, his grave. You cannot help any one of us when he's agonizing. You cannot help any one of us when he has a difficult finance difficulty that nobody knows about. Only Allah listens to your dua. If you are in a place, in a basement or a cave, locked, or in a plane high and shaken, you're not going to say, oh, our people, come help me. You're going to say, Allah. Then do not compromise with Allah. And that's what we need to teach ourselves, to our, to our children, and advise our dear brother and sister. Do whatever you want, in a way, like an active, in, in, you know, in a civil way, in a civil right way, but don't bring it to the deen. You are altering the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the mu'tasimeen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who hold fast tight to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide our heart to be good performer of the prayer. A prayer who change our behavior. A prayer who make us to be a beacon of light. A prayer who make us to be blessed one. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our heart and to make us people of good. People calling for the good and prohibiting the evil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower us with mercy and forgive us all and make us to die in a state of Islam. Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhaban nar wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa qimu salati arhamukumullah.